Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Welcome again to the Growing in Grace podcast in our 19th year, I think. I'm Mike Kapler, the Cap, and with me, of course, the man you've seen on TV commercials advertising toast as the other white bread, Joel Brzezinski. A little bit of toast. <laughs> I wonder if people see the commercials we do in, in uh, the state of Iowa where they say pork, the other white <laughs> meat. Yeah, I wonder if that's like a Midwest or Iowa thing or or, or if that's all over the place. I don't know. If not, then my intro probably meant nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was this um, Paul Young. He was an artist. For, um, he was in a band called S- uh, Street Band. And speaking of toast, anybody, just just look at this, look this up on YouTube. Street Band Toast. It's just a funny little song. Oh, that know. is funny. I like that name. What? Street Band? <laughs> Toast. Toast? <laughs> the song is funny, at least for my sense of humor. I won't link to it or anything, but I'll just mention it. So the, man, <laughs> the band is Street Band. The song is Toast. It's something that I did with my, my kids when they were younger, and we, every every once in a while, we'll, when someone mentions the word toast, we'll say, a little bit of toast, because that's how the song goes. <laughs> well, so. speaking of uh, you know, funny or cool names, um, Gary Wright, uh, some of our listeners would be familiar with a couple of his hits like Dream Weaver. He yeah. recently passed. And uh, somebody had told me that Gary Wright, number one, he started out as a child actor and ended up on the Honeymooners. Oh. Uh, back in the 50s, I guess. Um, but he also played in a band called Spooky Tooth. Spooky <laughs> Tooth, like teeth, you know, that you chew with. Oh, Spooky yeah. Tooth. And somebody in that band uh, was named Mick Jones, the founder of and guitarist of Foreigner. Oh. Um, huh. So, yeah, Gary, Gary Wright was in a band called, I thought, Spooky Tooth. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> of course, I can remember some of Spooky Tooth's songs, like Cold as Mice, uh, a Double <laughs> Hearing, and uh, stuff like that. Feels like the last time, but those songs never really took <laughs> off. <laughs> but I... I do like tracing artists like through the different bands that they've been in and the different things. And sometimes you find out some pretty cool things about that. Well, yeah. if you're a new listener, we are a Grace podcast. <laughs> Believe it or <laughs> I mean, not. Based upon we like we to do a little saying. banter at first, but all right, let's get into it here because that's why you're probably tuning in. You're, I'm sure you appreciate some of the, the humor and the back and forth. But look, we're, we're just two guys who have been doing this for a while. We came into the message of, of God's perfect grace many years ago. Prior to that, like most people, we were uh, kind of caught up in a, a church system of sorts that had a lot of religious stuff going on that kind of left us feeling empty um, and frustrated and, and maybe maybe even fearful at, at times. And when we came into the message of, of grace, and, and Joel and I did it in a, very much in a, a parallel fashion around the same time, so we've, we've been able to kind of grow in this thing together. We knew each other. We worked together for a while. And then eventually we, we started this podcast about 10 years after we came into this this message of, of God's goodness and grace that we find in the, in the new covenant. It, it was very, very different, very, very different from a lot of the things that we used to think. Um, and we've been pretty consistent with our message here You'll notice if you listen to the the past 900 plus podcasts that are available at growingingrace.org, you'll notice from program one to program now that we've grown in our understanding of of some things, or we might see some things differently. But we've got a pretty consistent message of our identity in Christ. That's one of the foundations of what we talk about along with how that ties into the new covenant established by God through Jesus Christ. And it's it's apart from works, and so I think one of the things we want to talk about because we're we're hearing from people out there who are either new to the podcast, very excited about their newfound 
life in Christ, even though they may have been saved for a while. They're new. The, the, the understanding that they've been gaining from the message of God's grace. And they found our podcast somehow, maybe through a friend. Thank you for sharing. And and then we've had others also write to us, some in the ministry who said, you know, gee, I really want to try and spoon feed some of my friends out there who are coming into this message. We're transitioning from a, a more works-based message into a grace-based message that God has inspired in their lives. So uh, today, let's talk a little bit about something very basic. If you're a, a new new to the grace message, new to our podcast. Joel, what is the one thing in this first visit to our little podcast church here? um, What's the first thing that we want to tell somebody? And I know it won't just be one thing, but what are the most important things that you would want to highlight? Oh, man, there are, it's, it's, uh, like you say, there are so many differences between, a vast difference, many vast differences between what we had formerly were taught and believed and um, where we've come to now. And it's not to put down anybody, and this isn't to, you know, be a, a downer for anything. It's just that we've realized that there are so many things that we were taught previously and that the church even teaches to these days that g- really go so against the, the true, pure gospel of grace. And I think one thing that I would bring out is that there are things that people are trying to become through what they do that God has already given them and th- that they already are, you know, based on our, our, our identity, our new identity in Christ. So, you know, people are trying to become sanctified. I'm just striving to be more and more sanctified. What do you it, mean by sanctified? So what uh, I used to believe, you know, sanctified meant, I used to believe it was a process of becoming more and more holy, my behavior becoming more and more purified, my behavior becoming more and more righteous. Not that that's a bad thing, you know, because behavior improvement can be a good thing. But I think what many people look at sanctification as and righteousness and things like that, they look at it as a process that I'm I'm trying to get better at this rather than understanding that sanctification is actually something that we already are. We are already sanctified. The word actually means set apart. In ho- holy, it's it's the same meaning of the word holy. We're already holy. We're not trying to become holy. We're not trying to become sanctified. We are sanctified. And then in our relationship, in, in the union that we have with the Holy Spirit, with God, that will come out of us. But it's not like we're trying to become anything. We're not trying to become righteous. He's made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus as a gift. (laughs) That's one of the basic things about the gospel. What is the gospel? Well, it's the, the righteousness of God that has been revealed as opposed to my own righteousness, the righteous things that I can muster up within myself to try to appear as more righteous to God or even to other people. Uh, justification. We've been justified. How? By what we do? By our works? No. We've been justified by faith. And Romans 5 1 says that having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And so there's another thing. Like you said, what one thing? Well, there's lots of things. We have peace with God. And we have peace with God based upon having been justified by faith. We're not trying to do things so that we'll finally be at peace with God. We're not trying to get him to have peace with us. We have peace with him based upon the finished work of Jesus Christ, based upon our our faith in him and having been justified by by that. So I don't know, there's a mouthful right there, uh, but it's... Christianity is so focused on how tos, how to become this, how to become that, when all of these things have actually already been given to us as as his gift. That's just it. You know, in the religious world, and a lot of churches have been affected by this, I, and I know they mean well, but it's how to become something. The gospel of grace is God has already made us something. Yes. <laughs> And now we live from that. We're not striving to become something that we think we're not. We begin to understand the identity that we have been given in Christ, born in him, inherited from him. 
and having become partakers of the divine nature. That That's who we are. You know, the Jews, under the law, under the old covenant system, they were striving and working and uh, working to establish their own righteousness. And by righteousness, we mean just being right with God. I mean, that's the simple way to put it, being right with God. That's really what people want to know, right? They want to know they're right with God. They want to know they're acceptable to him. Uh, and, and you don't have to work for that. But that's what the religious message will teach you. It's a constant striving and struggling to try to become something that you think you're not. Understanding who you are in Christ will change everything. So sanctified, set apart, declared to be holy, that's also a gift from God. Forgiveness, that's not something you have to seek for anymore in Christ. It's been provided to us with the shedding of his blood, shed one time. And so no, no other offerings are being given because once forgiveness is complete, there's no need for that. Um, if forgiveness were not complete, like it was under the system of uh, the blood of animals under the law, if that were still in place, then we would have need to seek more forgiveness again over and over again, because that would mean that our sins have not been taken away. But that is the case here in, in the new covenant of grace. The sins were not only covered, that's what, that's what happened in the old covenant. That's what happened with the blood of animals. They were covered. It was a temporary forgiveness. And sometimes the religious world, even in Christianity, has, has um, kind of come from that same mold well, I'm forgiven up until this moment. Well, then we have a problem because Jesus isn't shedding any more blood, you see. So, yes, righteousness, right standing with God as a gift, apart from works, sanctification, our holiness. We've been perfected. We're called blameless. Um, this is who you are now. This is where you get to start living from. It doesn't mean you'll do everything perfectly. Um, but you have been perfected in him. God took you and placed you in Christ. And Paul put it this way when he wrote to, to Titus. He said, when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, the goodness and loving kindness, some translations will use the word grace, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So it's not by any kind of righteous works that we have done. That's what the Jews did under the law. It was based upon works. They were trying to establish their own righteousness. Not just the Pharisees, we see the hypocrisy involved there, but all the Jews were, were that way. They may not have all been the hypocrites that the Pharisees were who thought they had established their own righteousness, while many people were just working to establish it. We've established it not by anything that we've done, but it's been established by God through Christ. And that's good news. And don't let anybody ever talk you out of this. All right. That's, that's the why it's called the gospel, because the gospel means good news. And in Romans 1, where Paul talks about that, the gospel is God's righteousness revealed. Uh, again, not our own righteousness. And all those things that you were just talking about there, the gospel includes all of that because it's it's something that we've received as gifts, you know, as the gift of God, again, not only his righteousness, but it, his righteousness has been gifted to us. And so we've actually been made the righteousness of God. Jesus became sin for us. And Jesus had never sinned, and he became sin for us. And then we had never done anything righteous. In Romans 3, Paul brings out several passages from the Old Testament. says, there's nobody good. There's nobody righteous. There's no one who seeks after God. So we who had never done anything right, we've been made righteous. And so either you're righteous or you're not. And so just accept the fact <laughs> that even though you've never done a good thing in your life, you've been made the righteousness of God. Uh, and it's not by works, it's not by law, but it's, it's the gift of God, sanctification, all the forgiveness, all the forgiveness of all of our sins from the start to the end, everything, it's all been forgiven. Another thing to bring out is that you, in Christ, are no longer a sinner. You've been made a saint. 
again, like Cap was just saying, we don't do everything perfectly, but our identity is now righteous and holy and sanctified and forgiven, and we have peace with God. So our, our identity is righteous. Our identity is no longer sinner. And something that goes along with being a saint is the fact that, I'm just repeating myself here, but just to drive the point in, that even when you do something wrong or don't live up to this righteous standard that either you have put on yourself or that you think that you have to live by, whether it's a law standard or you go to a church and they've got different rules and different things that they think that people need to live by, you are even when you don't live up to that, you are a saint, a righteous, holy, sanctified saint. You're no longer considered to be a sinner. God understands the gift that he gave you more than you do, <laughs> the gift the gift of righteousness. So take it for granted that you have been made righteous and that it's through nothing that you've ever done. And when, when you start to think about, well, I haven't been doing these things right or I've messed up on some things, get your focus back onto the truth that your identity is based upon the righteousness of God that's been given to you as a gift, not something that you have to try to live up to. Yes, it's good that we do good. We've, we've always said that on this podcast, but that goodness comes as a result of our identity, not as a matter of trying to establish our identity. I was just thinking about years ago, this ministry came to me. You know, I believe it was from the Lord, Gr- Grace Roots, and I c- created the, the website graceroots.org. And in my mind, a a kind of a tagline came along with it, established in grace, living in grace, growing in grace. I mean, the whole of our life in Christ is based upon his grace. It's not based upon what we can do to try to impress God or, or maintain a good standing with him. We have great standing with him because of what he has done. Colossians 2, 6 says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. How did you receive Christ Jesus the Lord? You received him by faith and not by anything that you did. And so walk in him that way. The verse continues in, in verse 7, Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. So it's all about walking by grace, walking by faith, and not trying to establish anything on our own. You know, um, wrapping up our program for, for this week, if you are somebody who is you know struggling with some things and you just don't feel very saved or something like that, our encouragement to you, all we can do is encourage you. That's what we're here for. But the spirit within you will really help lead and guide you into some of these truths. So if you're struggling with some stuff that you're trying to overcome or you're, you've been in the habit in the past of being taught to ask God for more forgiveness when he's already poured out all that he's going to as far as forgiveness goes. So, so what do we do? What habits do we need to change? Just begin to thank God. When, when you're struggling with a weakness of some kind, for example, just thank God for your forgiveness. Just thank him for it. Mm. Thank him that he has provided you with this. And focus on your identity. Realize that these things that entice you that aren't necessarily all that healthy, they are not a part of who you are as a child of God. They are not not a part of your identity in him. Um, Just remember that. Now, the Spirit of God will, will help you overcome. I can't help you overcome. But the Spirit of God can, and he is there to remind you over and over again that you are the righteousness of God in him. And that just never goes away because Christ provided us, the book of Hebrews says in chapter 9, he provided us with an eternal redemption. It's not going to get washed away with some of our foolishness. Um, it, it's, it's there to stay. It's an eternal redemption, and you can rest in that. And don't let religion tell you anything differently. I know the, the religion of how to is going to cause you nothing but frustration. Instead, just fall back on what God has done on, on your behalf. Yeah, and I was just gonna I was gonna let, um, have it end right there. And I did, is something you said just popped into me. Just yeah, what we were this particular podcast is you know about being about the how tos, about the how to religion, and how um, everything you hear in church seems to be how to do this. Seven steps to being holy. Five principles for being a, a better husband. The, the nine S's of sanctification. You know all that. Uh, life in Christ is not about a how to. It's about a who. 
it's about him. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about, like you said, Cap, I can't help anybody to overcome any of their problems that they have, any of the sin issues in their life or anything like that. I can't. Uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is there to help us. The how-tos can't help a person. What the how-tos did for me was that they got me all riled up. I'm like, yes, yes, I'm going to do that. I would hear a good sermon about how I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And and that was on Sunday morning. Then by Sunday evening or Monday morning, it was all dead. It was all gone. It's like, I can't do this. And so like you were saying, uh, let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. Let him be your guide and let him be the one who overcomes uh, on your behalf. Because uh, we certainly can't do this, but he has provided us with his grace and again with his Holy Spirit. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace. Growing in Grace.